Hello kids. Today we're going to do number four in the uh, Concord Cunningham Scripture Sleuth series. Number four. It's called the Party Piggy Bank. Carter's class was ten seconds away from being dismissed for the day when Principal Ironside stepped through the door. The scowling husky man scanned the class until he spotted Concord. Cunningham, I need to see you in my office right after school, he said in his usual gruff tone. The whole class gasped. The Bible-quoting brain of Pine Tops was the last person anyone expected to be in trouble. The class was so shocked, in fact, that nobody moved when the dismissal bell rang. Concord was just as surprised as everyone else. A personal invitation from Mr. Ironsides only happened on the most important occasions. Concord took a deep breath and quickly loaded his books into his backpack. As he headed out the door, he received a dozen wishes of good luck from fellow students. By the time he got to Mr. Ironside's office, he was so nervous that he couldn't stop his nose of all things from twitching. There you are, Concord, Mr. Ironside said as he looked up from his desk. I've got a problem. With me? Concord asked with a gulp and a twitch. No, 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 Mr. Ironside replied. You're not in trouble. Sit down and you'd better relax because it looks like your nose is about to jump off your face. Concord rubbed his nose and sat down with relief. We had some money stolen from Mrs. Pound's classroom this afternoon, Mr. Ironside said with frustration. I reported it to the police, but they won't be here for about an hour. Chief Riggins said you might be able to figure some things out in the meantime. Concord nodded. He was glad to help. He was even more glad that he wasn't going to be in detention. Let me know what you find out, Mr. Concordance, Pencil Ironside said as he flashed a rare smile, showing his large, bright teeth. Then he caught himself and replaced it with his usual scowl. Dismissed. Concord stood up, spun on his heels, and marched out the door. When he arrived at Mrs. Pound's classroom, she was sitting at her desk. Not knowing what to say, he paused in the doorway and knocked on the open door. Come in, Concord, the short, cheery-faced teacher said. Mr. Ironsides told me that you were going to try to help us solve this mystery. I just don't know how this could have happened. Hopefully we can figure it out, Concord said. Let's start from the beginning, Mrs. Pound. Where was the money when it was stolen? In the piggy bank, she said, lifting the bank from her desk. It always sits right here on the corner of my desk. May I see that? Concord asked. Mrs. Pound handed him the piggy bank. It was a small piggy bank made out of some kind of clay. The bank was definitely shaped like a pig, but it wasn't professionally done. It looked as if a student had made it. It surprised Concord that the thief hadn't broken open the piggy bank to steal the money. The only opening the bank had was with its thin coin slot. How much money do you think was in there? Concord asked. It was almost full, Mrs. Pound sighed. The class had been saving for a popcorn party. You see, students bring in spare change every day and drop it into the piggy bank. Yesterday, I told the class the piggy bank was nearly full. That meant we could break it open at the end of the week and use the money for a popcorn party. That's a neat idea, Concord commented. Oh, it wasn't mine. A student thought it up, she said. I see, Concord said, concentrating on the piggy bank. He decided to inspect it more closely. He checked to see if the bank had been broken open and glued back together. Definitely not. There were no cracks. Then he looked for some kind of trap door or secret opening. No luck. Then he looked at the signature on the belly of the pig. Rodney Doomsy? Yes, Rodney came up with the idea on Pottery Day, Mrs. Pound explained. The students were each given a three-pound lump of clay. They were told to create whatever they wanted. Students made all kind of things. Animals, cars, people, and lots of who knows what. She giggled. Rodney w wanted to make a piggy bank so the class could save some money and then have a party. I thought it would be fun, so I agreed to the idea. The class called it the party piggy bank. So what exactly was the money stolen? When exactly was the money stolen? asked Concord. It had to have happened during the afternoon break, said Mrs. Pound. How do you know for sure? Concord asked. Just before the break, a student dropped a quarter in the piggy bank. I heard it hit the other coins in the bank. Mrs. Pound explained. When the students came back in after the break, another student dropped a quarter in the bank, and we heard it hit the bottom of the bank. All the money was gone. So you were out of the room during the break? Concord asked. I did go down to the restroom to wash my hands, but I was only down there for a minute at the most. I was here the rest of the time, Mrs. Pound said. 
I'm sure that's the only chance anybody had to mess with the piggy bank without being sent by me or the rest of the class. And that one minute definitely isn't enough time to shake all that change out of the bank's coin slot. Concord looked at the thin slot. It was barely wide enough for a quarter to fit through. It might be possible to shake a coin, a coin or two out of the coin slot in a minute, but definitely not all the money. I agree that shaking it all out wouldn't be possible in such a short time, Concord concluded. Tell me about the day. How did the students change it from the soft moldable uh, stuff to this rock-solid surface of clay, he asked as he tapped a hard piggy bank. It's a new product that I just discovered in a catalog he said proudly. Usually after you mold your clay, you put it in a kiln to harden the pottery. But this clay is special. You just stick it in the microwave for 10 minutes and it's as hard as a rock. Good thing too, we don't have a kiln in the school. Concord looked around the room for a microwave. Oh, we don't have a microwave in here either, she said, knowing what he was looking for. The students took their clay creations home and microwaved them there. Then they brought them back the next day, and we displayed them over there on the windowsill. All except for Rodney's piggy bank, of course. It's always been right here on my desk to collect money. Concord slowly paced around the room and thought. He stopped next to the windowsill where all of the clay creations were. Mrs. Pound, did you notice any difference between Rodney's piggy bank and these other creations? He asked. Well, they're all different, she said. I guess Rodney's piggy bank is quite a bit smaller than the other creations. Rodney said that he didn't want to make his piggy bank too big because it would take too long to fill. He was probably hoping for a popcorn party as soon as possible. Concord's eyes darted back and forth as he thought about the facts. Then he unzipped his backpack and pulled out his Bible. I think Rodney knew that there would never be a popcorn party, Mrs. Pound, Concord said. What? Mrs. Pound exclaimed. You think that Rodney stole the money? How is that possible? Concord placed his Bible on Mrs. Pound's desk and opened it to the book of Romans. He flipped over to chapter 9 and read for a moment. Then he nodded, apparently having found what he was looking for. Please read Romans 9.21, the concordance said. You'll see what I mean. All right, kids, Romans 9.21. Please read that if you uh, get a chance to, and we'll see if we can figure out the mystery just as Concord seems to have figured it out. And then early on next week, uh, we'll go ahead and find out what the solution is to the party piggy bank caper. Thank you.